Welcome to St. Mary's Harefield's Thought for the Day for Wednesday, the 16th of September. We're now producing what is a thought for the week, and we're continuing to journey through the Old Testament book of Proverbs, part of the so-called wisdom literature of our Bible. Our first hymn reminds us that we are in the season of remembering the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone, short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, be thou our guard while troubles last, and our eternal home. Let us pray. Lord God, as we live in this strange state of limbo, we thank you for your blessings and help in past times. We entrust the uncertain future into your hands, and please be very close to us at this present moment. Amen. So we continue our exploration through the book of Proverbs. We're now approaching the end of the book, where we find a section entitled Wisdom for the Leaders. There are some more Proverbs of Solomon then there are some sayings of other people, and finally an epilogue. Today we're looking at three sets of verses which are picked up in the New Testament. So we look at Proverbs 25, 6-7, and the same chapter, 21-22, to and then Proverbs 27 and the first verse. Proverbs chapter 25, verses 6-7, to being happily humble. Don't exalt yourself in the king's presence. Do not claim a place among his great men. It is better for him to say to you, come up here, than for him to humiliate you before his nobles. Proverbs chapter 25, verses 21 to 22, dealing with difficult people. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. And Proverbs 27, and the first verse, facing the future. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Proverbs 25, 6-7 Don't exalt yourself in the king's presence. Do not claim a place among his great men. It is better for him to say to you, Come up here, than for him to humiliate you before his nobles. So Jesus picks up on this proverb in Luke chapter 14, verses 7 to 11. I expect you're familiar with it. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honour at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honour, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then he will be honoured in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Everyone likes to be noticed, to be valued, to be appreciated. If we don't feel that we're worth anything, we feel bad about ourselves, 
negative about life in general, and we can easily be sucked into a vortex of depression. But we do need to be realistic about who we are. We're not better than others. We shouldn't look down our noses at someone else. We shouldn't lift ourselves up because life has a habit of bringing us down. We're encouraged in the Bible to see others as better than ourselves. The saying pride comes before a fall stems from another proverb, chapter 16, verse 18, which states that pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. So when we're invited as a guest at a meal, like a wedding feast, says Jesus, we shouldn't sit in an important place. We might be asked to move to a lower position. People will notice it and we'll be embarrassed. We should just take the low place. Maybe we'll be asked to move higher, maybe not. People will notice us if it does happen and we'll be honoured. But the reason for doing this is not deliberately to be seen to be important, to be honoured in this way. It's what we're trying to achieve. Well, if it is what we're trying to achieve, we're falsely humble. A bit like Uriah Heep in Charles Dickens. I'm a very humble person. The reason to lift ourselves up is not to do that. It's not, it's simply wrong to do this. We are of equal worth. Our motivation and aim in life shouldn't be to impress others, but to look for that place where we can effectively serve, wherever it happens to be. If we serve where we faithfully can be humble, we may or may not be promoted in some way. Whether we are or, or not doesn't really matter. We're happily serving where we are. So a couple of things to bear in mind if we're going to benefit from this proverb reflected in the teaching of Jesus. Firstly, this kind of behaviour is easy to choose. It's not rocket science. To adopt a humble position of helping and serving others is a very fruitful way to live, and we can choose it. Our life will count for something, because we're not living in pretense, and we're genuinely blessing others. And secondly, our attitude is the key to living effectively in this way. Our heart needs to be in our actions. If we genuinely don't seek the limelight, we're open to whatever we may become. Young people today are caught up in a culture of image, where what they appear to be is all important. Well, it isn't important. This needs to be said emphatically is what we are that matters. We are to be ourselves, not try to be someone else. Let's model a servant, real lifestyle in an age when far too many people want to be famous and constantly noticed. Proverbs 25, 6-7 Don't exalt yourself in the king's presence. Do not claim a place among his great men. It is better for him to say to you, Come up here than for him to humiliate you before his nobles. Proverbs 25, 21 to 22, dealing with difficult people. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he's thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. This proverb is quoted by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans, Romans chapter 12, verses 19 to 21. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. There's something really important here about how we relate to people with whom we have problems relating. The basic message is to treat people kindly. If we do this, we can break a cycle of retaliation and of returning evil for evil. To play the world's game of returning evil for evil probably hurts us just as much, if not more, than the person we're hurting. Even if the person concerned doesn't change, doesn't repent, 
we will be free of a load of bitterness. However, it might well achieve some deep change in the, in the person concerned and us. It has been said that the best way to get rid of an enemy is to make them your friend. As Paul says in Romans, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. To heap burning coals on their head is not to cause somebody suffering, by the way. It probably stems from the Egyptian practice of carrying a pan of burning charcoal on one's head as an act of public repentance. The other thing that this achieves, if we take this attitude, is that we're leaving any judgment to God. We don't have to take judgment on ourselves. In fact, it's not recommended. We can leave it to God. It is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35. Jesus picked up on loving enemies in the so-called Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 47. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? And if you greet only those who are your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do this? It's all very well saying this, but what about doing it? It can be a different kettle of fish. It's very difficult to be kind to someone who deeply hurts us. Jesus practiced what he preached. He took this attitude of self-giving love to the cross and beyond. To live with kindness, forgiveness and blessing is the best way to live, but it does have a hard edge. It's a good thing that God has this attitude towards us. Proverbs 25, 21 to 22. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Proverbs 27, and the first verse. Facing the future. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. One of the features of these Proverbs we're looking at today is that they feature in the New Testament. This proverb finds expression in the letter of James, a very early part of our New Testament canon. James chapter 4, verses 13 to 16. Now listen to you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if this is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. Planning can be helpful. Having goals can be positive. But we can't be definite about anything in the future. COVID-19 should have taught us this. Life is fragile and it quickly passes. We are like a mist, says James, that appears for a little while and then vanishes. So we ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. In other words, we need to take God into account when we look to the future and try to plan for it. James is the brother of Jesus, who becomes a leader in the Jerusalem church. Jesus himself, talking about worry, says in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We can live so much in the future that the present passes us by. We can talk about all those things we're going to do one day, but we might well not do them. Politicians promise all sorts of things, but it's helpful to remember a little saying that goes like this. We can't build a reputation on what we're going to do. Appreciating the present is a good approach to life. 
It has been said that the present is called the present because it's a gift. Let's unwrap it and live it, being conscious of God's presence, love and hope. In the parable of the rich fool, we read that the rich fool says, I say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Jesus reminds us that we also need to prepare for eternity. If we don't prepare beyond this life, we are being very short-sighted. Proverbs 27 verse 1 Facing the future, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. We really don't know what the future holds for us as COVID-19 continues its unabated threat. To live wisely is the challenge of our time. These three proverbs can chart a course in the right direction. Our next hymn reminds us of our essential dependence upon God. Be thou my guardian and my guide, and hear me when I call. Let not my slippery footsteps slide, and hold me lest I fall. Still let me ever watch and pray, and feel that I am frail, that if the tempter cross my way, yet he may not prevail. Let us pray. We give thanks to God for the freedoms we enjoy, as we recall with gratitude those who in war serve the cause of liberty. We pray for the service of the Royal Air Force today, as we remember the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. Remember all on active military duty in these challenging times. We pray for the peoples and communities of our world, for those whose lives are torn apart through conflict, violence, poverty and the continuing threat of COVID-19. We pray for the economy and for so many people affected by job cuts. We continue to pray for our schools, colleges and universities with the unique challenges that each of them is now facing. We pray too for the mental health of our nation as we face a prolonged period of not meeting for social groups as we had planned. We remember those who are ill and pray for God's healing for Astrid, Barbara Leake, Bob Warner, Derek Webber, Jean Green, Jarlith O'Connell, Stella Linane, and Stuart, and any others known to us. And we pray for those who grieve for Claudia Blackstone, John Mackey, Pauline Pod Collett, whose funeral takes place today, Linda Taylor, Ray Peverell, Ron Jordan, and any others known to us. The collect for today, which is the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Merciful God, your Son came to save us and bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So in our final hymn, our song, we remember that we just need to take one step at a time as we travel through life. One more step along the world I go. From the old things to the new, keep me travelling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new, keep me travelling along with you. You are older than the world can be, you are younger than the life in me, ever old and ever new, keep me travelling along with you. And it's from the old I travel to the new, keep me travelling along with you. Proverbs 25 verses 6 to 7, being happily humble. Don't exalt yourself in the king's presence, do not claim a place among his great men. It is better for him to say to you, come up here, than for him to humiliate you before his nobles. Proverbs 25, 21 to 22, dealing with difficult people. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Proverbs 27 and the first verse. Facing the future, do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day will bring. Heavenly Father, help us to take one step of faith at a time, to be happily humble, to treat everyone with kindness, forgiveness and love, to face the future with hope, trusting you to be our guide when we can't see clearly. This coming Sunday's church service is our harvest and it's being streamed at 10.30 a.m. There are also services taking place every Sunday at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. The September magazines are now available. If you would like to have a copy, uh, then please contact the office and we will get one to you. If you haven't got one already, you can pick them up Uh, from the village, from the post office, and from We Love Coffee. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and those you love today and always. Amen.